Students are complaining about the lack of sidewalks in the area surrounding campus. And the newest coffee shop on campus is buzzing. I'm Brianna Goins. And I'm Terrence Jeffries. These stories coming up on Carolina News Today. A rare supermoon was viewed by most of the world earlier this week, but for many North Carolinians, the view was obstructed. Clouds cover most of the event that also included a lunar eclipse known as the blood moon. The next astronomical event like this won't occur again until 2033. The supermoon was a bust here on campus, but the annual moon festival was not. The Chinese club helps international students feel at home by observing this harvest time celebration. The Chinese Club at UNCP hosted a moon festival last week celebrating Chinese culture and tradition. The members of the club engaged in music, dance, song, and food that is popular in international culture. Many students came out to the event and it turned out to be a success. The moon festival is a very special event to many Chinese students and made one of the Chinese Club members feel right at home. In the moon festival, all I and my family and friends will get together, have a dinner, and do some uh, Chinese traditional game. It's very popular and it's very happy. Individuals at the moon festival participated in arts and crafts, face painting, games, and many other activities celebrated in the Chinese culture. Chinese club president Dana was incredibly pleased on how the event turned out. I think it went really good this year. I think probably out of all of the other moon festivals, I think everyone actually had the most fun this time. Like all of the club members. I was really excited about that. Like on stage, I actually had people laughing. <laughs> and they never do that. Like ever. I really enjoyed that. And I think there are a lot of people here. Generally we have about 200. So. The Chinese Moon Festival is not only an annual event at UNCP, but a yearly event in China. For Carolina News Today, I'm Ashley Wood. A sorority on campus is raising awareness for hazing prevention. CNT reporter Jamar Smith shows us one of the more colorful events the group held on campus. The ladies of Lambda Theta Alpha Latin Sorority Incorporated are taking a hands-on approach to a very delicate topic, hazing. The LTA sorority set up outside of the James B. Chavis University Center on the campus of UNCP to promote inclusion among both Greek and non-Greek students, faculty, and staff, and to make a united stand against one of the biggest problems concerning Greek letter organizations all over the country. Individuals who wanted to participate simply had to pick a color of paint and make a handprint on the banner, and by signing their name under it, they made a pledge against hazing for the whole campus to see. After speaking to the president of the UNCP chapter of Lambda Theta Alpha, I learned the importance of talking about such an uneasy topic. Okay. It's important to talk about hazing because it's an uncomfortable topic, especially when you're on a college campus and you're promoting Greek life. It's one of those things that people don't necessarily want to bring to light, but it is a very real um, problem that exists within Greek life. So it's important to talk about it, address it educate students and Greek um, life on the issue and then fix it as a community. I spoke to a member of a different sorority, Zeta Phi Beta, and she gave us her opinion on the event and hazing in general. A lot of students should really look up hazing and see why it is a very bad thing and why we are trying to push ourselves away from it um, because it has left a bad mark on many Greek organizations so I think we should do away with it. I think this is a really good event to get students out and to help spread the word about being against hazing. At the end of the evening the banner was hung up in front of the University Center full of handprints and names making a statement we are anti-hazing. For Carolina News Today I'm Jamar Smith signing off. Last week, we covered an electric car event on campus, and this week, reporter Jael Pembroke continues her coverage of sustainability efforts at UNCP. Has your phone battery ever died and you're in the middle of campus and you don't want to go back to your dorm? Well, now we have a new solar 
panel charging table right in front of the bookstore. A solar charging table has been added to the UNCP campus, but the solar charging table isn't the only new energy saving source. UNCP had one car charging station right beside Dow. Now, two additional car charging stations have been added to support the use of electric cars. One is located off Odom Road behind Moore Hall in Lot 6. The other is in front of the Jones Athletic Center in Lot 14 off University Drive. UNCP's Sustainability Director Jay Blouser says the charging stations are very productive. Uh, during the day when folks are driving to campus, students or employees can charge their cars and we don't uh, make you pay. So you can basically charge your car without having to pay any fees. And uh, it's connected to the campus grid, electrical grid, so it, it actually works day or night, rain or shine. But the solar panels are there and every time that the sun is out, we're actually pumping energy back into our grid so it offsets the amount that we use. Another student was excited about the solar table. I think it is great for studying because sometimes I can't really get anything done in the room, like me and my friends. So we just come out here, sometimes just sit down and start working. And since it's got like charging stations, I don't have to go back in my room. For Carolina News Today, I'm Jayo Pembroke. For years, students have struggled to travel off campus by foot with a lack of sidewalks. CNT reporter Lauren Wilson tells the students' voices are being heard. Plans for sidewalks are currently being discussed for the Pembroke area. For years, a lack of sidewalks has been an issue for students wanting to travel off campus, causing a safety hazard as students are forced to walk closer to the road. Any sidewalks currently in existence suddenly end, leaving students to walk on the grass to restaurants and grocery stores. Travis Bryant, Associate Vice Chancellor for Campus Safety and Emergency Operations, discussed the current on and off campus situation, highlighting that many complaints have been received in the past over the issue. Plans are in the master plan for uh, development with the town, the county, and the university to, uh, to try to add some sidewalks. We actually, actually have approached uh, the Department of Transportation and the state. We had some folks on campus about two weeks ago trying to solicit some funding so that we can actually have those projects funded and begin development. The only current crossing available for students is the one that leads to McDonald's with sidewalks ending at the restaurant premises, leaving the students with no other pathway to follow. The most affected by this issue is off-campus students with dogs who find it difficult to walk their pets around the Pembroke area. Victoria Vigilante, UNCP student, argues that within the area it's extremely difficult to find a safe place to walk her dog. Back here along by the McDonald's to Food Lion there are no footpaths and there's terrible lighting and cars can't see me or my dog. She's a dark color and it's just scary and dangerous and I get honked at and there's divots and there's no safe place to walk unless you're on campus. UNCP campus itself has many sidewalks safe for students to walk on with campus lighting currently being replaced with LED lights for brighter lit pathways. The university is currently reaching out to the town and county to try and improve the town's safety for pedestrians going off campus. For Carolina News Today, I'm Lauren Wilson. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion hosted their 8th Annual Social Justice Symposium discussing issues in today's society. Carolina News Today reporter Jamar Smith was there to report. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion held its 8th Annual Social Justice Symposium Thursday in the University Center Annex. Students filled the room to be a part of a discussion on incarceration in today's society as well as social injustice and police brutality. The director of ODI, Robert Canada, hopes students will walk away being more aware of what's going on in the world they live in and also being equipped with tools to work towards a solution. The purpose of planning the, this year's Social Justice Symposium was based off the fact of all that was going on in society as it related to um, police brutality on citizens, primarily people of color. The symposium consisted of a panel of five which had two UNCP professors. Incarceration tends to come before drug use. So this is a very, very important number. I think the anecdote is to stay engaged. I think the anecdote is to continue to educate yourselves. I think the anecdote is to have those hard conversations, say those awkward things that people don't want to talk about. And Professor Irving Joyner of North Carolina Central University as the keynote speaker. So when we talk about changing the system, it won't change until you take over. 
Because if the people who were in power today intended for the system to change, it would have been done. While some students came as a part of a class assignment, others came with a pure desire to learn. I came in here with a learning mindset to learn tonight, and I, I did learn a lot. So did I form any opinions or views? Probably not yet. I'm looking forward to processing this and maybe looking at this a little bit more, and uh, they really opened up my mind as to what really happens behind the scenes or behind the bars, so to say. After the event, Dr. Canada expressed his own desires for students to take action and make a difference. If students don't step up to be the change agents, you know, you all are our future. So it's your responsibility, as well as all of the primarily your responsibility as future leaders, as current leaders, uh, to make our society better. For Carolina News Today, I'm Jamar Smith. The start of a new year has brought numerous changes for our Greeks on campus. CNT reporter Lauren Edwards tells us about personnel changes at the office. Greeks on campus have been without a full-time director since the end of last semester. Leanne Strickland Melvin has stepped up as the interim director to help the UNCP Greek community move forward. There were over 60 fraternity and sorority events planned for the start of the semester and we felt as a division of student affairs that was very important that those students have the support they need. With 16 active Greek chapters on campus, support from faculty, staff, and even the community is essential. Just last year, student fees were raised to help hire an assistant director for the office. The focus this semester is to continue the search for this position and then revisit the process of hiring a full-time director in the spring of 2016. All Greek Council President Alexis Dawson says Greeks were concerned about the change at first. Um, so I think that at first everyone was a little concerned, you know, not really knowing where this was going to go, um, how it was going to affect each individual chapter, each individual person, uh, but I think that Leanne coming into this has really made an open door for everyone and has really accepted everyone and made everyone feel as though they can trust. The office was moved and renovated to add more space for Greeks and the name was changed to the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. This was a national public relations campaign to hopefully eliminate the harsh stereotypes that come with the name Greek Life and to include what the office actually focuses on. For Carolina News Today, I'm Lauren Edwards. Another vacant position on campus was the lead instructor for ROTC, but this semester cadets welcomed their new faculty member in military science. CNT reporter Joseph White is in the program and prepared this report. The long wait is over as UNCP's Army ROTC welcomes its new assistant professor of military science. Captain Noah Switzer, a former field artillery officer, is taking over as the program's new instructor after the departure of former ROTC instructor Captain Larry Pitts. As the APMS, he will be in charge of a company of nearly 50 Army ROTC cadets. Although he is a brand new addition to the program, he looks forward to the responsibility of training future Army officers. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this is a job I really wanted to do to come work with young people that have a motivation and a drive to achieve something in their life. And uh, I just couldn't be more happy to be here. Just as cadets are transitioning from a student to Army lifestyle, Captain Switzer expressed the challenge of adjusting to the sudden transition from functioning as a combat field artillery man to becoming a college professor for military bound students. Well, you definitely had to pump the brakes a little bit. Um, you know, in the, uh, the regular army, you have a lot of discipline, you know, th but the thing you have to teach yourself is that these guys and gals that are in this program, obviously they haven't had that kind of training, that discipline training yet. Uh, looking forward to and, you know, laying some of that leadership on them and teaching them how to lay it on people in the future. That's uh, going to be a real adventure for, uh, for me and for them, I think. So. Sergeant First Class Tracy Kuntz has been the program's senior enlisted instructor for the past three years and was also a temporary substitute during the first few months that the program was without a professor. He is confident that the new APMS will bring a wealth of knowledge to the program that the students can utilize in order to improve their skills. I think having the uh, the new APMS in the program is going to be a great um, benefit and help to the cadets. Uh, he has the experience of command. Uh, he can share the, his experience and his knowledge with the cadets about what it's like to be an officer in the Army. Uh, he served as a platoon leader, a commander, in staff positions, which are vital roles for officers in the Army. And I, I feel the cadets will greatly benefit from his knowledge and experience. 
Captain Switzer is currently preparing the program for the upcoming field training exercise in November. A new coffee shop opened last semester on campus and is proving to be a good stopover for students with a busy schedule. Carolina News Today reporter Jamal McAllister checked it out. A new coffee and bakery shop has been implemented in the UNCP bookstore. Jasmine's, which was opened earlier in 2015, has become a pinnacle in hope for the growth of the bookstore. The installation of Jasmine's is also part of a bigger picture, which involves Sodexo. This partnership between the two will attract a new crowd of students. The interim bookstore manager, Keats Ellis, says this will create a new atmosphere on campus. We just hope that our customers, while shopping, can peruse that area, sit down, relax, have a coffee, a cappuccino, a slushy, not slushy, but um, a icy, um, enjoy a muffin, a slice of cake, a cookie, while they're in shopping, get a nice, you know, little refreshment. Students are responding to the addition in a positive fashion. Now student traffic in the bookstore is moving up. Jasmine's has created a diverse environment, becoming a relaxed and studious arena for students to catch a breather or even grab a quick snack. Freshman Alexis enjoys the modifications. I definitely feel like this was the perfect place to place the Jasmine's bakery because I mean if I'm in a rush and I don't have time to like stand in a long line at Starbucks I can easily come here for a better price. The goodies at Jasmine's are baked fresh every day from the store's personal baker. With a variety of smoothies to choose from Jasmine's is having no problem setting its mark. The lead barista Chelsea agrees that this new union proves to be of convenience. It's a good thing that they put another coffee shop on this side, you know, so the students that live farther this way is closer, you know, this way to their classes, so. Both Sodexo and the bookstore, as well as the Pembroke campus, looks forward to the growth of Jasmine's. A brave soccer player shines again. And Braves quarterback Patrick O'Brien has a great outing with an unfortunate outcome. Deja's up next with sports after these messages. Braves quarterback Patrick O'Brien had his best outing of the year at Greenville last weekend, thrown for over 200 yards, including two touchdowns. Rontonio Stanley led the team with 22 yards of rush offense to go along with a Braves season low of 42 total rush yards. After first half of struggles, the offense picked up the pace in the second half with three scores, including a 21-yard touchdown pass to B.J. Bunn. Those late scores weren't enough to down the Crusaders, who gave the Braves their first loss of the season. The squad will host Tuskegee for the homecoming game this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Braves kicker Matt Davis received the Fred Mitchell Award for his excellence on and off the field during the month of September. Davis has yet to miss a kick attempt, nailing all PATs and field goals in 12 attempts. He is also a member of UNCP's Student Athlete Advisory Committee and a student leader in his Athletes in Action Bible Study Program. Davis is one of six Division II athletes to receive the award this month. Courtney Crump had another terrific weekend against Clayton State, completing the first hat trick in two seasons. Her performance was honored with Athlete of the Week accolades for the second week in a row. Not only is she Athlete of the Week for Brave Nation, she was also named the Peach Belt Conference Player of the Week. That hat trick against the Lakers was the whole offense for the Braves, who also contributed no assistance to her netters. Crump reflected on her accomplishments in an interview with CNT Sports. Um, extremely blessed. Um, I've would have never thought coming to Pembroke um, that this would ever be, you know, I just wanted to play soccer and win games and uh, be the best that I could possibly be. So to be named PPC player and athlete of the week, um, it's a huge blessing. 
Crum made an outstanding sequel at her two-goal show against Montevallo by upping her offense this week versus Clayton State. For the second game in a row, Crump has been the sole proprietor of offense, scoring two in the first half and one goal 20 minutes into the second half. The Braves were outshot by Clayton State 17-9, but keeper Janae Aiken complimented the three-goal show by nabbing nine saves on the 10 Laker opportunities. Aiken and Crump's performances have given the Braves a four-game win streak in a 3-0 conference record. At 4-3 overall, the team will travel to Armstrong State this week to continue their dominance. Men's soccer had a second half battle with Clayton State over the weekend. Senior midfielder Josh Phelps netted the first goal of the game in minute 62 of the game. Unfortunately, that was the only goal for the Braves as the Lakers scored shortly after they tacked on another goal with five minutes left in regulation. The Laker rally gave the Braves a 2-1 defeat, making the team 4-3-1 on the season. The Braves traveled to Florence, South Carolina to face Francis Marion this week following the loss. It was Dig Peak night this week for the volleyball team, who was still winless in conference play. Facing Augusta, the Braves got shut out in three straight sets, losing each set by at least seven points. Nicole Matthews matched a season low of seven kills, and Keisha Jeffries had 15 digs on the night. The Braves haven't won two sets in a match since their win against Kathleen on September 19th. Losing seven out of their last eight matches, the Braves will head to Francis Marion, hoping to bring home their first conference win of the year. With the inaugural season of swimming and diving team scheduled to start next fall, UNCP Athletics has announced the, the hire for head coach. CNT reporter Jamal McAllister tells us she was already a member of the UNCP family. The UNCP Athletic Department are dipping into a new venture with the announcement of a new swim team joining the athletic club here at Pembroke. With the renovations recently made to the pool area in the Jones Center, new goals are ready to be set. The woman for the new job of leading this team is head swimming and diving coach, Rhonda Blank. Coach Blank has been a part of the swim program here for 16 years as an adjunct professor. Working her way up the ladder, she has proved herself worthy enough to coach Pembroke's very first swim team. Students who had come through the swim school program that were looking to swim competitively wanted to refine their strokes and I see myself as a more technical coach. I look at technique. In my mind, if we can get the technique down, then everything else falls into place. Without, without technique, you don't have speed. You don't have that fluency in the water. So uh, that was one of the things that they would come to me for. So 16 years of working with competitive swimmers um, to get to where I am. The transition from instructor to competitive coach will not be a struggle. She has trained competitive swimmers from ages 3 to 15, making the UNCP swim facility her sanctuary. She'll be teaching classes and coaching winners, as her passion for swimming will help motivate her students and the team. Being already a part of the Pembroke family, along with the many qualifications she has under her belt, Athletic Director Dick Christie is thrilled to have her on board. And Rhonda really uh, fit all those descriptions. She was a two-time graduate of UNCP. She had worked extensively with youth in the area in swimming actually over 16 years had worked with youth swimming in the swim school here at, at UNC Pembroke. Um, she also worked in uh, Hope County Schools, so she was an assistant AD, she knew athletics, she knew coaching, she knew administration, and was very well connected in the high schools in this region. The UNCP swimming and diving team will debut in the 2016-2017 athletic school year with a roster of 25 girls. For Carolina News Today, I'm Jamal McAllister. At the Lady Bearcat Invitational in Bluffton, South Carolina, the Braves had a top-tier production from sophomore Ashley Thompson. She carded a career-best four under par, 68, earning her third-place finish. Braves also finished third overall, three strokes above Montevallo. Savannah Thompson and Laura Bird finished in the top 20 along with Ashley Thompson. With the top finish, the team travels to Sunset Beach this week for the Murder Beach Intercollegiate at Ocean Ridge Plantation. A student, a soldier, a cadet, and a powerlifter. Adrian High manages to do it all while training to hold on to his state record for squat. Here's Joshua White with more on the young lifter's journey. This is Joshua White reporting for Carolina News Today. A student cadet at UNCP holds the state record for most weights squatted in the 205 pound weight class. As an Army ROTC cadet here at UNC Pembroke, Adrian High takes the motto Army Strong to heart. High currently holds the squat state record in the 205 pound weight class squatting 540 pounds. His record stands in the powerlifting federation called the USAPL. 
Being busy with school, the army, and powerlifting, High still manages to balance all three. I mean, balancing it all, it is pretty hard. I mean, I have things I have to do for ROTC and school, and competing and lifting, the competition is really hard, so you just have to prioritize everything. And for me, lifting, it's up there, probably, high, probably too high, but it's what I love to do, so I just make time for it. Although lifting the weight may be an individual effort, Hai doesn't work out alone. Longtime friend and training partner Kevin Kim has his back when Hai trains at the school gym. I think it's pretty cool that Adrian broke the state record because he's um, one of my closest friends and for him to be a full-time student and all teach to get it and for him to be training so long I think it's pretty awesome for him to break the state record in squats. Hai hopes to break records at the next powerlifting competition he competes in in this upcoming December. Until then, he'll be hitting the books as well as the weights. For Carolina News Today, I'm Joshua White. We wish Adrian the best of luck in this competition in December, and that's it for sports. Back to the studio. Thanks, Deja. That's it for this week. Don't forget to check us out on the web at carolinanewstoday.com.